Hello. So today I want to talk about medical stuff. So I had a conversation with a friend today and he was talking about first aid training. And he's a paramedic, so he does a lot of training for other people. And they've seen me how he gets so pissed off with people that always say that the first aid trains uh the the been in first aid courses and, and they know what to do in a situation and lo and behold when he presents them with something relatively simple something really benign they screw it up they don't know what they're talking about or they do the wrong drills <clears throat> or worse still they even argue with them but he's been a paramedic for a while uh, he's got a lot of experience he's got a lot of military experience and they're arguing with him about silly things so it got me thinking I've done a lot of first aid training uh, I volunteered with the ambulance service for five years. I uh, didn't get paid for it, just went out to be a medic and a driver. Uh, just going out to lots of different calls. Now, one thing for me that that highlighted, being in the military, I was very good at trauma. Uh, a lot of military training is pretty much trauma. You don't deal a lot with heart attacks, strokes, uh, all those kind of things. You, you tend to deal with uh, things that happen just quick, short, sharp. It doesn't tend to be lifestyle issues so I realised that I had a big big gaps in my knowledge I didn't know a lot about the, the, the medical stuff so that your strokes your heart attacks your cardiac arrests all those kind of things so it got me thinking for you guys out there that have done some kind of medical training what are your shortfalls because a lot of medical courses that you go on these days are very much medical emergencies so strokes heart attacks those kind of things Normally lifestyle issues or chronic problems that go wrong. It's very unusual for to get a first aid course which properly deals with trauma. But trauma is one of those things that's, that's quite traumatic to, to see and quite traumatic to deal with. And obviously it's traumatic for the individual. <clears throat> and to give you an example, a few years back we went out to a gentleman who worked on a farm. And there was basically a grid that went over the floor and he was slopping out the cows once they've been in to get milked. And what ended up happening, they basically put all the all the manure for the cows, they put it over this grid, there's like a big corkscrew that spins. And what that does is it takes it all out and puts it into the silo. And the problem was he, was, he took the grid off this and started to clean it while it was running. He slipped in some of this manure and his leg went in and his leg was basically wrapped around this. Poor guy was in a lot of pain, a lot of trauma. And when we started to I was first on scene with, with uh, my other medic. I had to wait for the, the proper ambulance to get there because we, we arrived in a car. And when we got there, I felt really helpless because I dealt with a lot of trauma stuff. I could deal with gunshot wounds. I could deal with head trauma. I could deal with things like this. But this was a very unusual situation for me. So externally, I was quite confident. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're fine. Don't worry. We're going to do everything we can. We'll get you out as soon as we can all these things, but internally, I was screaming inside, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to deal with this, I don't know how to deal with this. Thankfully, the paramedic crew arrived with the, the proper ambulance, uh, the truck, and between the four of us, in fact, there was five of us there, and eventually an ambulance, they arrived as well. We worked out how to get them out, and we had to get the fire brigade, they basically knocked down the wall, took out all the, the motor and the mechanism to lift this corkscrew up about six inches so we could we could maneuver his leg out then we seen his leg we noticed how how bad it was it was mangled by had open wounds and then there was manure getting into it so infection was a big issue so there was a lot of things I had to think about that I hadn't thought about beforehand and I thought I could deal with pretty much anything so there was infection side of it uh, there was a mass trauma there was dealing with someone who was in an immense amount of pain but he was scared of needles, believe it or not, and didn't want pain relief. The only thing we could give him was Entinox, which is gas, same as gas and the other the, uh, women during childbirth will use. So the more I looked into this, and the more I thought about this, and I, and I went over this and over this and over this, and I was in a big bit of conflict about what to do going forward. And that's when I decided I was going to I was going to push myself as much as I could and look at things that were unusual. And I started to ask around, ask a lot of friends the kind of things that they'd seen, the kind of things that had happened. And numerous other things that had sort of come along. 
uh, over the years to try and to try and work out my shortfalls. Eventually, I managed it. I went out and did quite a few jobs that were unusual, really unusual, and I managed to get what I wanted to get to and achieved my goal. That when unusual things happen, now I had that that baseline, that foundation. Going forward, though. I'm just thinking for you guys that have got any kind of medical training, when was the last time that you did anything with that training in terms of practicing? When was the last time you actually talked through what you're going to do real time? I don't mean telling me the bare bones of if it's a heart attack, you're going to do a CPR. If it's cardiac arrest, you're going to do a CPR. Uh, or if someone's, I don't know, if they've managed to cut their arm off, I'm going to stop the blood. When have you actually sat down and talked through what you're going to do with somebody? I'll give you an example. So cardiac arrest. Now my friend that's now the paramedic, we were on the ambulance together and he had never been to cardiac arrest before. We were sitting in the, the middle of this huge town and a job came through. And, and I, as God is my witness, we had like a, a big GPS type thing. And when a job comes through, so I goes, woo, 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 woo. And it displays what the job was. And he tapped the side of it and said, I want a cardiac arrest. And as God is my witness, one second later, woo, 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 woo. And there it was, cardiac arrest, 22 year old. So we set off, I was driving. And I set off at a million miles an hour and flashing blue lights. We got there, seven minutes to travel nine miles and that was through town. When we were driving there, my friend Ollie said to me, he's like, Dave, this is a 22 month old, not a 22 year old. That's when Ollie went very quiet. His first cardiac arrest was a toddler. So this toddler, and I won't go into the full medical side of it, uh, but long story short, they ended up stopping breathing through numerous complications that they had. This was on a Saturday morning, just stood up, coughed, fell over. So we got there about two minutes after a paramedic had got there in a rapid response vehicle. We were in a second rapid response vehicle and as we were arriving the air ambulance was in the overhead. So I went in and straight away the paramedic who was working on the child and doing CPR, I stood back for about five to six seconds. Now Ollie was the medic at this point, I was the driver and we delineated that as deliberately that way so Ollie then started to look at this child and through no fault of his own he froze now he knew all the theory of cardiac arrest and he could talk me through it no problem we could have a conversation about it now and he'd be able to tell you inside out back to front how to deal with cardiac arrest but for the first time when he was presented with it it completely maxed him out and he didn't know how to deal with it and how to do it. Now this is not a slant on Ollie in any way, shape or form, but it just goes to prove that theory is one thing, the practical side of it and actually the applied knowledge and being able to do something with that is something completely separate. So I left Ollie for about five, six seconds to give him a chance to do something and then I said, right Ollie, I've got this just now. This wasn't my first cardiac arrest. Uh, it was the youngest I'd been to, to be fair. Uh, but what I did was I started uh, CPR on the child. And I then just gave Ollie a few a few things to do. So I said to him, can you get the defibrillator? Right, I need, need you to move that mask. We need to get the child mask. All these things, whilst the paramedic was trying to get some of his, his drugs ready to try and try and help this poor child. Now, what this kind of emphasises and what I'm, what I'm kind of trying to get to here is that you can have all the training in the world, you can have all the theory in the world, you can think you're Billy Big Bollocks and you know what you're going to be able to do, you can talk yourself up, you can talk a good game, but when the chips are down, if you haven't actually put in the effort beforehand, you haven't practised, you haven't done anything with this, then you're not going to know what to do. Or you might, but it might take you a minute or two to actually... Uh, let that kick in before you actually then start doing what you need to do. Now, fast forward beyond that, that was probably the worst day that Ollie's ever had in terms of 
uh, how, he's, how he's dealt with the situation. He's now a paramedic. At the time, he wasn't a paramedic. Uh, he ended up going on to search and rescue and doing search and rescue with uh, the Royal Air Force. So he's seen a lot of, a lot of bad stuff. But for you guys, what I would like you to do is next time you think you know something or next time that you do your first aid training or when you're next out and about, I see you're just out hiking, hunting, driving the car, let's assume something happens. You're driving, driving to the store for whatever reason and there's the three cars smash in front of you at the intersection. Happens right in front of you and you're the only person that's there at that immediate point. So you stop, you get out of the car, you make sure there's no hazards to you. You go to the first vehicle, which is now about two feet shorter. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna react? Talk through it in detail, not just in generic terms. So talk through it in great detail. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure the vehicle is safe. I'm then gonna approach the driver's side of the vehicle, I'm gonna turn off the engine. Once I've turned off the engine, I will take the keys and I'll put them on the dash so that everybody can see where the keys are but nobody's going to start the vehicle. I will then ask everyone inside, are you okay? I will then find out what the response is. Right, let's go down two or three different routes now. Everybody in the vehicle is unresponsive. What are your actions now? Or the driver starts screaming and shouting but the passenger is just mumbling. Who do you go to first? The passenger, let's go down for another scenario now. The passenger's face is covered in blood. They are screaming, they're making a lot of noise, but the driver's slumped in the seat and he's got one eye that looks like it's normal size and the other pupil is completely dilated. Who are you going to treat now? Oh, worse still, there's still vehicles driving up and down past. Or another scenario, the vehicle's on fire. What are your actions going to be? Someone's trapped in the vehicle. There are children in the vehicle. Uh, you've got three people that are unconscious, the vehicle's in fire. Are you going to take them out? Or are you going to worry about the neck? Are you going to try and put something around the neck beforehand? There's lots of these different scenarios, but now is the time to look through them and try and get an answer for it. The time isn't when this accident happens, and this applies to a lot of things in life. It's not just first aid. This can be a multitude of things. Second guess them. Try and think of the second, third, fourth order effects. Try and work out what's likely to go wrong, what's likely to go right, what other people are going to do, what external factors can feed into this, which can complicate things for you, or that can make things easier for you. Uh, there was an example of uh, my friend, uh, another friend, Richie, who had a child that came down a hill at the side of his house, brakes failed on his bike, went straight out into the road and was killed. Didn't know that at the time, all the traffic stopped, and there was a physiotherapist got out of her vehicle in what looked like scrubs. And Richie said to her, are you medical? She went, yes, are you medical? Yes, but she completely frozen and didn't know what to do. At that point then Richie had to take control of the whole situation. The Richie wasn't, wasn't a, a medic. He didn't have a lot of medical experience. His wife was a police officer, so she went into police officer mode. She went straight out, started to direct the traffic, stop the traffic. The ambulance came along and there were several people that were there that were that had, were first aid trained, that had medical training, and none of them stepped up. It was only Richie that did. Richie then got in the back of the ambulance to assist the paramedic and did CPR for four to five minutes and the run to the hospital because this was out in the country. So these are the kind of things that, that can happen unexpectedly. When that happens is not the time to try and work out what you're doing and try and work out what the plan is. So, I would encourage you, have a think about things now, get all these things in your own head, square your shit away now, so that when it happens, you know what to do and you're not gonna be left wanting, and you're not gonna live a life of regret if you do something wrong, or worse still, don't do anything, uh, out of fear and out of worry. So that's all I've got today. Sorry, that's a little bit ranty, uh, but it's just, after speaking to Ollie today, I've, I've just, it's kinda of got my, my head going with it, and it, I've got a few things I want to now fix with, with people that I know just to try and help them along with things like this who have recently done first aid courses uh, one of which who, who thinks they're with George Clooney and they're now, they're now a fully qualified doctor so a reality check might be in order so I hope you got something from this I hope you enjoyed this and 
and please take this away and, and do something with it. Don't just sit in what I've said. Actually, actually, put put some action into this and have a think about it. And better still, get someone that you know to throw injects at you and try and talk through them and find a logical solution to it. But anyway, hope you like it. Leave some points in the comments for me. Let me know what you think. Uh, please share this video as well because I think this is this is quite an important message that a lot of people would appreciate. So anyway, I'm done now. Adios. I'm off for a hike. Uh, and I'll see you later. Bye.